Well, we're back on a little TED20 today, and the um, <coughs> we got it running yesterday, and the water pump's leaking. It's dribbling out this hole here. So what we'll do today, we'll run through fitting a Sparex water pump. Um, I like to buy the Sparex ones. They've, they have the hub already on them, and um, they're just a better pump, I believe. So we might replace a couple of radiator hoses here, um, replace this bendy hole thing, and... Um, yeah, we'll just have the camera there and follow along. Now, I've taken the bonnet off. The bonnet used to come along here, and if you remember, it had a, a ring-in bonnet off a of Ford Fergie. And I have a bonnet off a TEF diesel that I'm going to put on it, but um, that's not what we're here today for. So, to get the radiator out, there's two bolts down the bottom here. Loosen those fellas off. And at this stage, I just loosen them and I put a bit of inox or WD 40 around them. They can be tight, so they're not that tight in my case, but I do like to um, put a bit of that on early in the piece. And before the radiator gets too sloppy, we'll go and undo the radiator hose, the old wiggly hose here. And um, we don't really need to undo the fan shroud because. Um, there's a little slot in the front here and a slot there so you don't actually have to unbolt the radiator or unbolt these right out the, um, the radiator just sits up on them so I'll see if that'll just no, better be careful around there but um Look, I'll hook, unhook the hose around this side here. And a little bit of WD-40 around there is a good thing as well. And all the hose clamps, you don't know when they were, when they were last um, used or undone. And we have a plastic pot underneath here to catch the water. Just because we're in the shed. We got it going yesterday, so that means I can drive it into the shed now and do this in comfort. I'll get the hoses off and I'll come back. Right, we've undone the bottom wiggly radiator hose. Now, there's a bypass hose here, which you don't necessarily have to undo to do the water pump, but we're going to just to replace it. We have the top radiator hose here, and two hose clamps that we can undo. Another one over here. Back them off a fair way. And then we have a radiator support, and this is to support the top of the radiator. Now, they've had this off at some time and they've put a bit of wire there, a bit of, a bit of farmer's friend. So that comes out, up out of the way. The radiator will just tilt forward. We should be able to lift it out. Okay, with the top loose, the bottom screws back right off. You can lift your radiator right out of the way. And that's our water pump. We can actually feel quite a bit of movement there. I'd imagine when we take the fan belt off, or um, we'll loosen the fan belt off, we'll, we'll feel a lot more. So we'll hone in on that and show you what to undo. Well, once we've got the radiator out of the way, there's two ways we can go. One is loosen the generator from here and loosen the belt off, but I find I just put a spanner on here and, and undo these screws and with the fan belt being on there it gives you a little bit of resistance to turn here even though it's not hard to turn here now so so we just need to undo these four bolts here you need a half inch spanner for that and 
It's not a very big job doing a water pump. It's quite an easy one, but I might do a few other little things while I'm here. Oh, we might have a look at our thermostat housing. They have a habit of rotting through. And because we buy the Sparex pump with the hub on it already, um, we don't need to worry about undoing the centre bolt here. Now, this is what they call a trapezoid pattern. You have two holes that are wider, that are wider spacing than the bottom holes. All the early ones are trapezoid pattern. So your fan will come off now. On the end of the fan there, you can see this one's been rubbing on something. This one's had a bit of a crash. Same with that one. So I think what we'll do, we'll we'll hammer that out. We'll try and flatten it all out as best we can again and um, take any sharp edges off so if it touches our fingers later on it doesn't cut us. But yeah, she's had a wild and varied life, the old fan. <laughs> now we'll need to undo the generator bracket, which is just this bolt here. But someone's put a metric bolt in, I believe, by the feel of that. Oh, I wish they wouldn't do that. Okay, I'll deal with this and come back in a moment. Right, I've undone the bolt. I don't know what head it is, but I think it, it looks like a UNC thread, but yeah, the head, <laughs> head's about 12 millimetres. So at this stage, we can pull the belt off, get that out of the way. That should slide out of there, but there might be a bit of junk I need to clean out. We'll tuck him over here for the moment. Now this is our water pump that's leaking. This is the pulley. We're going to use the pulley again. So we need to... Get him off. Oh boy. The rubbish in there. You can see the water pump dripping. Um, this one's an old type one that had a grease nipple on it still. Great idea, but it looks to be over greased. Now, to pull the water pump off from here, we have a bolt here, a bolt here, and a bolt here. So we'll have a little bit of a scrape around there. So we can get the socket or the spanner on nice and cleanly. There's a hole at the bottom of the water pump and if you over grease this it actually the grease comes out but in this case it looks like it's come out through the bearing so not to worry we've got a new one so now this is 9 16th easily. This is an easy job to do really. Better use the spanner properly or someone will pick me up on it again. I get in trouble if I use the spanner back to front people message me and say, you've used that spanner wrong. Not that it really matters, I've been doing it for 40 years, I should be coming good soon, but anyway. It's all about getting the job done in a timely manner. All right, I'll undo these, and I'll come back. Okay, we've taken two nuts off here. There's a bolt at the top. And that water pump should come out. Look, someone's been in there that's got a bolt through it. Looks like a stainless steel shaft too, so someone's been in having a fiddle. 
That's fine. We need to clean all this gasket off and tidy all this up so there's a nice smooth surface for the gasket to seal on for the new water pump. And um, at this stage, if you'd like to do your own water pump up, if you have a look at my um, Bundy Bears Shed YouTube channel, um, I have done a video on how to strip, how to strip and how to replace bearings and all in your water pump. So if you want to go that way, go and have a look at the video. It's not hard to do. You can buy the parts readily, but um, I like to put a, a new Sparex pump in. Um, that's my favourite pump, the S43576, if I can just get that where you can see the part number. Now, Sparex sponsor my channel, which I, I love them doing that, but they're not sponsoring this tractor. They're sponsoring one of the other ones, so this water pump I actually bought. Um, it's not a gift from Sparex, but um, on this one, it's just what I prefer to use, so that's why I bought it. I have... Bearco, Bepco and all the other ones available to me but um, Sparex are the best in my opinion and um, that's what I choose to spend my money on and you get a new a new gasket in the box which I'll just hang up on the top spout and this is our new water pump Now you'll notice there's a cotter pin here. This can go back or forth wherever it needs to go to line the belt up. So when we get the water pump on and sitting on properly, the drain hole goes to the bottom. So it will actually it will actually sit on like that. Um, it's a later design water pump that has the um, sealed bearings. It's non-greasable, but it does have sealed bearings in it. Has a later type cassette seal and a cast iron impeller. So, okay, we'll get everything tidied up and come back and get ready to fit it. Well, we've got it cleaned up. We run it around it with a um, with a little right angle die grinder and a and a pad. Now, what I want to show you here is that the holes don't line up in every position that one does line up but they are out just ever so slightly like that one there you see the hole doesn't line up so <clears throat> take your time find the correct correct place for it which is just there in ours so what I choose to do now is I use Loctite gasket sealant. It's just an aviation cement. There's some um, Permatex have one. Really, everyone has one. Just a bit of a bit of a wipe around here. My whole brush is going hard. I don't use a lot of gasket cement ever. So um, get that around there just to cover. If you're relying on gasket cement to make it seal, you haven't done the job properly. So we'll put the gasket up. Now whatever you do, do not use a silicon based product on this. You only need a little, a little ball of extra silicon to go inside that housing there. First stop the fins on your radiator. I should have got a better bottle of this stuff in, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, pour it on, Lance. He's all right. Anyway, that's a bit more than I'd normally put on. It's just I, I found this old pot and I thought I'd use it up a bit. So <laughs> not to worry. And then with the telltale hole down to the bottom. Water pump should just slide in. Okay, I'll do all the bolts up there and come back in a moment. Now you'll notice we have a cotter pin here that needs tightening up. 
we have a nut here that's loose needs tightening up so what I do here to get it in the right spot I get the old water pump I do a measurement to the front of the flange on the old water pump in this case it's 100 and 107 mil then I bring the vernier through here and see in this case we need to go on a little bit more so we can tighten the centre nut make sure that we maintain clearance in here though. So I can bring this in till we're just clearing in there. And that's as close as we can get with this one. And what measurement are we at? three millimeters different. We can't really go any further in I don't believe. No, that's got us with the nut done up as tight as we can. That's as far as we can go. So that's where they like this one's set. We can't go any closer there, it's just too close. Tidy, tighten this little cotter pin up. We'll go and clean the pulley up, we'll sit the pulley on and we'll see how our pulley's going for alignment. Right, we're back on the water pump and when I left you, we couldn't get this measurement here correct and it had me a little bit worried and there's a couple of things I've done and on this water pump and one is that I've put a bigger washer on the front the washer that came with the water pump was light and it didn't quite cover the end of the housing as much as I would like so I've chosen a thicker 5 16th washer I can put him on <coughs> oh, me. and I can do this all the way up And, and that's the safety that the water pump the water pump can't or the, the pulley can't come off now at this stage we'll tighten this cotter bin like a cotter pin on a bike. <coughs> Pardon me. I've got a little bit of a cold left over and it dries my throat out talking. So we've tightened the screw, tightened the cotter pin. And right before, if you remember, we couldn't seem to get the this back far enough to get our 111 or 108 millimeter from the front flange to here. But while I was washing the pulley up, it occurred to me 
that before I pulled it apart I didn't see if the belts were all in line. So when we put the pulley on and hold it back in place and run a straight edge, pick up two surfaces, probably if I come over this side it would be better, if we pick up two surfaces of the bottom pulley just at the front there and we come up here look at that we bang on so when we line the pulley up with the bottom pulley we don't need to be any closer than that so the measurement and I didn't look at it before I pulled it apart but the belt must have been out of alignment um, because to move this back another three millimeters that would mean it would be back here somewhere and it just wouldn't line up so so when we run a straight edge across the two flat machined surfaces of the crankshaft pulley I might try and drop you down there if I can yeah so we we have a machined surface on the front of the pulley here so by the time we pick up two of those machined surfaces so that gives us a line that just comes just in front of that pulley there so look that's bang on I'm really pleased with that something I like to do now though is pull this off and instead of just leaving that cast iron to rust I like to get the aerosol and give it a bit of stonely grey and now look I know stonely grey is not the right colour um, it's Massey Ferguson light grey is the colour Stonely grey gets sold for Ferguson TE20s and it's just too dark. Now if you've got a tractor like this one that's just going to be done up just for driving around and have a trailer on at home and or well, just for fun really and we only bought it to do a few videos with it and things like that so um, I'll just go and get my pressure pack and I'll give that a bit of a bit of a seal up. And due to the magic of YouTube we have a nice grey water pump. We're not going to paint this tractor, it's just to seal things up and a bit of maintenance. We should, while we're here, this throttle screw is not right. There's something going wrong with that. Way too much slop in there. We probably should really drill out and put a pin in there. But um, anyway, for this part of it, the pulley now goes on with the holes to line up. The fan goes on, we need to tidy the fan up and put the fan back on and slide the radiator back on. Now if that was the only job you were doing here, you would put that on, put the fan on, put the belt on, adjust the belt up, put the radiator back in, fill it with water and that's your water pump job done. So. That's how to fit a water pump on a Ferguson TE20. Um, the radiator bit is pretty self-explanatory. You should know how to put that back on, no worries. Um, we might leave the front off this one just for a little bit. I'm going to replace the, the heater bypass hose here. Um, this little hose here, it's getting replaced. We're going to replace the top radiator hose. Um, I'm going to unbolt the thermostat housing here and have a look in there and see if it has a thermostat or not um, see how rotten this whole assembly is and if it is rotten we'll replace it so we might call it quits for this video for how to fit the water pump on a TE20 um, look it's the same process TEA, TED, TEF so just to keep these videos short, that'll do for the water pump video and we might continue filming but it'll be a separate video on the top cover here.